Good morning, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about how to create a clone in your creative spaces, because a lot of people have been asking me how I create different clones of different characters whenever they're in their creative spaces. But before we jump into all of that, if you're new to the channel, I upload NGS content daily. So if you do play this game, I would really appreciate a subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin the video. So the very first thing I want to go over is, yes, I have recreated my creative space because, uh, well, a lot of people were not very impressed with my ragtag random item just slapped together. So I was like, all right, cool. You know, Chrono made a freaking nightclub, which was fantastic. So I was, you know, I was a little bit jealous, got a little bit of competition. So I was like, all right, maybe I should have spent a little bit of time. I spent way too much time creating this. I spent like... I want to say like five or six hours just sitting there in the creative spaces, but there are definitely things that I can improve. But nevertheless, as we can see over here, there is a nice little tree. This is a blueprint, actually. There's an anime merch store over here with uh, with my uh, 2002 look. And if you talk to her, they say, what are you buying? For those who played um, Resident Evil 4, if you know, you know, it's pretty nice. And then we've got a nice little pool area in the back. But the main selling point, at least the thing that I like the most, is going to be the pixel art. We've got a giant Neko Mimi over here. We've got Bochi of the Rock over there. And as you guys saw in the intro, we've got Sus Among Us over here. So I'm pretty happy with the pixel art. I think this is what makes my creative spaces so unique or special, is definitely the pixel art. At least that's what I'm most happy about. But anyway, back to the main point of today's video, and that is how to create a clone of yourself. As you can see, there is a clone of myself right here. In case people want to take selfies or photos, you can just come to my personal quarters or my creative spaces and uh, immediately just get a nice little selfie, which is very nice. But if you want to do this for your own creative spaces, what you want to do is you want to go into a build mode or edit mode, and there is something called the Arcs Decoy. If you do not have the Arcs Decoy, it's because you need to buy it. So in order to buy it, you simply come over here to your control panel. So uh, I've hidden it behind all of these uh, golden boxes. So what you're going to do is click on buy build parts, the top one, which costs Genesis points. And once you're here, you're going to go to the third to last part, the play parts. Once you're over here, since I bought mine already, it's not going to show up if I scroll down. However, if I untick unbound items only, you're going to see right down here there is the ARCS decoy, and you're just going to purchase this. It costs 3,500 points, and all you need is one copy. It binds it to your entire account, so once it's bound to your account, you can use it on anything. So once that is done, we're going to come over here. And once we're over here, we can place our little arcs decoy. Now, keep in mind, I'm still in edit mode right now. So we're going to place this. We're going to place that right there. And you're going to see that it doesn't transform. When I exit edit mode, it's still just like a hologram, basically. But what you want to do is you want to go back into build mode and then press E to edit. And over here, you're going to fill out the details over here. So let's say that, uh, you know, name Karopi and they say hi, right? Then when you close it, and apply, it's gonna save whatever your current look is. So you can see that I'm currently using this idle animation, the tea time animation, so it's gonna copy this. However, let's say that I change my look. So let's go over here, we're gonna go to my customized looks, and let us change to my 2002 look, right? So we're gonna apply that, and now you can see that my look is different and my idle animation is different as well. So when I head over here and I edit again, and let's say I do an exclamation mark with high and I close and I save, it's gonna take this form now. You can see that it's changed to my new look. And this is what you're going to do if you want other players. For example, let's say that I want Emmy in my personal quarters. What I would do is I would get Emmy to come to my personal quarters. I would give them editing permission. I would place the arcs decoy. And then after I place the arcs decoy, Emmy would come over here in editor mode and click on edit over here and fill out the details. So it's very important to get the person that you want to impersonate to fill out the details themselves because only that way will the model turn into them. And the moment you try to edit anything over here, it's gonna turn into your model again, all right? So it's very important that you get whoever you wanna impersonate, get them to fill out all the details, but you have to trust them because you're giving them editor mode. They might just destroy your entire personal quarters or your creative spaces. So you do need a little bit of trust and make sure that they're not going to do that because you're giving them editor permissions in order to create their clone, all right? However, let's say that your friend came over here, they created their clone, and you need to move the clone. That's perfectly fine. You can still go over here to move. You click on them, 
and you can see you can now move the model. Let's say that we don't want them standing at the stage anymore. We want them to be in the water. You can now place them into the water and they will still retain the same model. The only way to change the model is if you actually go to edit over here and if you change any of the name settings or the message settings, that is what will change the model itself, all right? And keep in mind that the model does retain whatever idle animation you're using. So it's very important that before you make your clone, you might wanna go over here to customize looks, change motions, and at idle right here, you can see all of the different idle animations that you have. So you can, uh, let's say we want sitting on a box, for example, you could change it to this so that your PC will also sit on a box and uh, yeah so idle animations now have a little bit more value because it helps customize your creative spaces a little bit more so that is pretty cool and now if you just want to delete them all we're going to do is go delete over here and poof and they're gone all right now do keep in mind there is a limit of the arcs decoy as you can see there's placement limit of 10 so you can only showcase 10 arcs decoy at any given time in your creative spaces. You can't go over that amount. So let's say you want to showcase all of your cast parts. You know, you've got like an armory or a garage built or something, and you want to show off like your Freedom Gundam and your Zeta Gundams and all of your different Gundams. Well, then you can only show off your top 10 looks. So that is a limitation. It is a little bit unfortunate that they did put this limitation, but it's still pretty awesome that you can just run into someone's personal quarters and see like the evolution of all all of their different casts or all of their different fashion, it is pretty neat. So uh, that's how you use the Arcs decoy. Special thanks to all the members for supporting the channel. It really means a lot to me. Thank you again. But yeah, that's all I wanted to cover in today's video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe and I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye.